What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here, your first Collider TV Talk of 2019, joined as always by the lovely Thad Williams. Happy New hey, Year, buddy. Hey, Happy New Year to you, too. How are you feeling? I'm feeling uh, tired. Cool. I'm feeling, I'm feeling sick. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Great way to start the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of traveling upcoming this month, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, and but we uh, listen, the one great thing about the holiday time is the binging of television. Oh, gosh. And I think you and I, later on the show, we'll talk about things that we binge, things that we, we love. We binged a lot. We did. I did I did a lot of TV watching, uh, and then I got into a Game of Thrones wormhole Ooh. because HBO was marathoning them. Yep. And then my father... Uh, called me and he's like, hey, did you see HBO's Marathon and Game of Thrones? I've never watched it. I just started. And then I proceeded to get hundreds of text messages from my dad about... What's going on? Who is this? Why is this character doing this? Correct. What's going happening? Huh? Then, then, which I had to do was refer a lot of those me text messages to Ken Knapsack because I didn't know the answer, <laughs> even though I've seen these episodes three to five times a piece, to the point where... Amanda came in on New Year's Day, and I was watching this, like the most recent finale, right? Yes. Of like the most recent episode. It was the end of the marathon. And she walked in. And she's like, "That's enough! It's enough! No more Game of Thrones! I'm tired of hearing it! I'm tired of the and the and the and I was like, "You're right. You're right. But it's over. You're in now, luck. So it's, it's over. It's done. But you, it's over now. You came in at the right time." Uh, but yeah, watched a lot of TV. Uh, we have some some trailers and a little bit of news. But I think that uh, we should start with just a shout out to um, Bob Einstein. Yes. A.K.A. Super Dave Osborne, a.k.a. Marty Funkhauser. One of the funniest comedians in the world yesterday. I, I didn't know this, that he's Albert Books' yeah. brother. I yeah. had no yeah. idea. I, I dropped that knowledge on uh, on Mr. Mark Ellis. And, yes. uh, and yeah, the Albert Brooks changed his name because he was born Albert Einstein. Oh, that's hysterical. And uh, yeah. didn't, it's, it's a hard name to be a comedian. Sure, sure. For. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's there. They were brothers, yeah. and uh, Bob Einstein started as a writer on the Smothers Brothers. Wow! Like he's been he's been around forever. Yeah, uh, I actually met him very briefly years ago. He he was a guest on Tom Green's mm. uh, sh uh, talk show that yeah. taped. Two block, two doors down. Right. Uh, that I worked on, and uh, he came in, and we 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 pulled a bunch. I didn't know the pantheon of Super Dave history yeah. at the time, and I was pulling a bunch of clips uh, for him to show, like the Tom watched growing up that yeah. we were showing during the sh during the episode and he was regaling about all of his stories about when he w which which stunts he actually thought uh, were going bad and that he thought was he was going to hurt himself <laughs> at and all these all these absurd things and I, I've been watching clips the last day it's awesome. and uh yeah, he's so funny. He was, uh, he was, he was, his deadpan humor yeah. only got better the gravelly, the older his voice got. 100%. Uh, it, it, he was able to, I mean, even that most recent scene, uh, season with of Curve. the water. And the, the, the tap water. The tap with, water. With his girlfriend. Oh my and God. The, the, the running of the bulls uh, yes. uh, funeral yes. scene. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, a, a true comedian. It really Legend. was. Um, you know, I, the, my first exposure to him was on Letterman. You know, sure. Yeah. And yeah. Um, my dad was obsessed with them. Um, you know, my, my I was lucky enough that my dad introduced me to comedy very young. Right. Like he sure. my made sure that my mom wasn't listening as he played George Carlin albums. Wow. And, you know, I mean, it, I, it was as terrible as this is Bill Cosby albums. Hey. But I mean, hey, Cosby back then I, was I had know, those. I had the same albums. Yeah. It's OK. It's and okay. my dad had the fatherhood book, which when I went home, I well, took it off the shelf. Yeah. And, yeah. That might not, yeah, it not, might not have the best. The, the, the afterword of that book is right. Takes a turn. But the Super Dave Osborne. So Super Dave Osborne, uh, a.k.a. Bob Einstein or whatever. Yeah, they they came to Pittsburgh as part of like this this comedy event, right? And I was like five, or okay, six, okay. And I remember hearing about it on WDVE, which is the classic rock station in Pittsburgh. WEVD Classic Rock, one hundred two point five, home of the Steelers, Penguins, and Pirates. <laughs> WDVE rocks Pittsburgh. That's how it went. Nice. Um, and the best morning show. Uh, all the just they had the best Pittsburgh accents, and they were talking about it. And I was like, Dad. Dad, we got to go to this comedy event. My dad's like, I don't think, like, I can hide albums, but I don't think I can take you to a comedy event when you're six. Fair. So we didn't go to the comedy event, but uh, I, I always remember as one of those things, my dad would be like, you know what, looking back, probably should have taken you to, the, to the comedy event. <laughs> yeah. But you didn't, you know, the thing about Bob Einstein and, and, and his career is he really, he, Kirby Enthusiasm gave him this incredible career renaissance. Oh, yeah. As yeah. Marty Funkhauser. And uh, we have a friend named Sarah Funkhauser. Yes, and we do. The first time she told me her last name, I was like, are you kidding me? Are you a Funkhauser? <laughs> are you a Funkhauser? <laughs> 
Uh, and uh, I, I tweeted yesterday that my, you know, like having it, Bob Einstein is a, in my force and would be like a dream force oh, in golf, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, him, Larry David, myself, Jeff Garland, whatever. <laughs> and um, it, it, his career renaissance with that, what it did, I think, for a lot of people was made him go back and watch a lot of his original stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just a genius guy, his, his, just the acting alone in, and the, the episodes that Larry David gave him are tops in the series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every, all, almost every Funkhauser episode of Curb yeah. uh, is, a, is a landmark episode of that season. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it has a lot to do with, with Bob's personality. Uh -huh. And, and it, it, was great to, it was great to see him have that, that, re, that resurgence as a as an actor, because I think so many people from Letterman and Conan and all of his late night appearances mm -hmm. and, and the, sh and the stunt show that was huge in Canada, uh, and, and played in the U S sporadically and stuff. Sure. Uh, I feel like so many people only knew him as super Dave Osborne yes. to the point where I'll, I, I, I ran into numerous people that have, that never knew that his name was Bob Einstein. Oh yeah. Like that only knew him as super Dave. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the fact that he got that whole new career as Marty Funkhauser, uh, towards the end of his life was, yeah. was, was something else. And, awesome. and Albert Brooks and a bunch of people have been sharing this, this great clip from an old Albert Brooks film, okay. which I want to go back and watch. I'd never seen, yeah. um, called modern romance. Okay. And, uh, it's one of the first roles Albert cast Bob as a, Salesman in a in a, a sporting goods store. Okay, uh, Albert Brooks is. I gotta is, go follow him. He's like uh, he's uh, he's just recently broken up with his girlfriend, and he's trying to get back into like into shape and 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 into his own hobbies. And mm -hmm. so he goes to the sporting goods store to get some running gear. And Bob Einstein just like takes him around the store and just like piles thousands of dollars of products <laughs> on his and like convinces him that the other stuff isn't good and that he needs to get the top of the line stuff if he's serious about this. And he does it with just the most deadpan delivery right. where it's he's not even making jokes but it's still hysterical right. and it's it's really funny to watch and and you can tell that the looking back on it you can tell the interplay between the two of them uh the brothers just so natural yeah. uh, that that is the one thing is one of those people that no matter what he said it was funny yeah right all the time yeah uh let's get into it uh we had like th basic well so we can start real quick with the we got like this Punisher teaser trailer and a date dropping. Yes, yes. Uh, Dorian Parks, you guys can follow him. He's a Collider personality. Has seen the first two episodes. He said they're pretty good. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, the I think the there's a review on Collider.com. The the, the 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 review embargo is next Friday. Okay. So we'll hear uh, we'll we'll hear all of his thoughts. Yep. Next Friday, I I think you or I maybe both of us we're gonna try to. Get Pop in and watch watch a couple of them with him, sure. So we can do a little mini mini review mm -hmm. of the first few episodes of the of season two. Yep. Uh, so next Friday you should check out that, and mm -hmm. then the following Friday, the eighteenth, is when the whole series drops, drops on yep. Netflix, and then the nineteenth is when they cancel it. Right. One hundred percent. Yeah. So and then we'll get the teaser trailer for Jessica Jones season three. Right. Right. And then they'll cancel that before yeah. the teaser. Yeah. Goes. And they, I think they've. I think. I think I've been I've been hearing a lot of rumors that uh, or or confirmations that Deborah Ann Wall is in fact reprising her uh, character Karen uh, Karen Page, Page in is, is, is or in Punisher in Punisher like okay. she was in season one yeah of course and she's uh, apparently makes an appearance in season two as well yeah. so so uh, she really plays the star cross lover well yes she does <laughs> yes she does <laughs> those eyes she's always she she's kind of got. Uh, like the the Claire Danes eyes, where they're always on the verge of crying. I mean, no one no one is always on the verge of crying quite like Claire Danes, right. especially in Homeland. Correct. I mean, oh my gosh! And we got in the final season of Home. This is gonna be the final season. Of oh Homeland. my gosh, it is! Yeah. I gotta catch up. I, I'm I'm one season behind. I'm two. Yeah. So I mean, there was a ton of TV and the fact that like you know Billions is coming back. I just finished Dana Mora, which we can talk about. Yes, we should talk. Did about you that. finish Dana Mora? I finished it over yeah, the break. Let me throw that in the yeah. rundown down here. Um, yeah. But, it was really it was it was, it was really something, but yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to Punisher season two. Uh, I I, I I'm sad because I season. it's it's hard to go into it knowing that it's almost con almost concretely the last season. Sure. So it's like it's you know that you know they didn't really film it as the final season. That's what I'm saying. Or the like, final did chapter. They know? I don't think they right. did. I mean, I'm hoping that they. I'm hoping that it ends concretely. I think a lot of these shows. 
even if you look at Daredevil season three, like it ended with a with a finite ending, and then had like a little coda at the end right. where you could you could pick it up, sure. and you could go for another season with another with another offshoot. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Punisher will kind of do that as well. Marvel loves their post credit scenes. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so I I feel like it will have a definitive ending, and then a post credit scene that we're like, oh, what if right. this could be the season three, and then we'll never see it. Right. right. Which kind of sucks, but it, I think it. Going into it knowing that it's going to be the last we trip. We almost get to revel in it. Yeah, the last last trip around the sun with, with the Punisher. I yeah. mean, we didn't get that much of him. We got half of half of him in one season of Daredevil right. and then two seasons on his own. It's not bad. No. I mean, for, for a television character, for a comic book property... There's and so much. It's not like comic John Barenthal doesn't get cast in other things. I, I, I think I think he will do he'll just do, fine. He'll be okay. He'll be all right. Um, the um, the the one thing that worries me a little bit is that it seems like we're going to have the same villain and then another villain. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I hate that. I that always the 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 stacking of villains always bothers me. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I it's 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 a necessity of the comic book genre. It's been happening. I mean. Ever since uh, Superman two, right. uh, and then Batman Returns, famously mm-hmm. with the double villains, mm-hmm. and and it, 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 it's kind of like part and parcel. Like you 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 start out with one villain, and then you get two villains, and I think it it's born out of the comic books. Yeah, but beat it, one, join together to beat the big. Correct, and then you know sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. Uh, I think it. I'm hoping that it that there, that Punisher season two will keep. Sharp focus because the first season kept sharp focus. It was it was tight the yeah. whole way through, partially because it wasn't an origin story. Yeah, we had already met him in Daredevil, so we didn't need we didn't need to do a lot of setup. Yeah, and I'm hoping that the second season, uh, we can we can do the setup real quick. We already know we know our villain, uh, Jigsaw, f- that right. from season one. So. I'm hoping. I'm assuming Jigsaw is going to work with somebody else, right, uh, to get the job done. And I, he will I be don't, called the Puzzler. Ooh, <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know the Punisher comics uh, well enough to know who they would pick as yeah. the second villain, but I'm excited. Uh, no, me too. Um, you know, the, this the Punisher was my favorite Marvel series of last year, 100. Without a doubt, um, because we didn't really have we didn't have Daredevil last year. You know, we had Defenders and whatever other things we had. Yeah, we did have Defenders. I forgot about that. Uh, but yeah, um, it, listen, if this is what I get as my last season of Punisher, and this is the final Punisher I see for a long time, or whatever movie, if sure. they're going to do something like that, I'm great with it. Yeah. yeah, it's 13 hours of fun. Yes. Yeah, and and lots of violence. <laughs> So much violence. If you're if you're a child watching at home, do not watch The Punisher. Yeah, it's not for you. It's not. Don't. It's, it's don't really show your kids The Punisher. It's really violent. It's. I mean, beyond. It's it's Game of Thrones level violence. I mean, yeah, yeah, but like modern day violence, yes. which I think has uh, cuts even a little bit closer. One hundred percent. Um. Yeah. It's 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 rough to watch sometimes. Ah, one hundred percent. Uh, we also got a trailer for this show called Sex Education, and it was everywhere yesterday. Yeah. It was everywhere. People, it was on every website. Seems like people are like, this is the hot new stuff. Somebody even uh, compared it to it possibly being the in-betweeners, which, listen. I mean, that's a high bar. Huge bar. Don't, don't come at my in-betweeners with some show that by the trailer, I don't think I'm going to like. I mean, all right. Uh, I, I like the idea. But it, it seems so far out of left field that it, it's possible. I mean, listen, it is England. It, yeah, I feel like this is a lot more. I think the show's going to have a lot more dramatic beats than the mm-hmm. Inbetweeners ever even attempted at. They never had. Uh, but I think that I think that this could be a fun teen sex dramedy, mm-hmm. as it were. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be. There's what, is that Margot Robbie's sister that plays the other lead? She looks just like Margot Robbie. She does, doesn't right? she? I, I thought it was Margot Robbie. I mean, she, Margot Robbie's a lot of places. I don't think she's in a Netflix teen teen British uh, show. At I mean, the moment. Gillian Anderson looks. Gillian Anderson, I, she's one of the few American actors that can pull off a British accent to the point where it rem, for, makes me forget that she's not actually British. I thought that she was British until you just said that. I mean, like <laughs> when she when she showed up in uh, the fall. Yes. Like I was like, wow, wait, was Gillian Anderson British the whole X Files? Yes, but she was born in freaking Chicago. Yeah, she moved there. I think her she and her husband live in in the UK. So and she's she going Lindsay Lohan. So she, she started, developed an accent. Well, she started doing. Doing British television when okay. she moved to the, to to the UK, yeah, and I think to do that she just had to 
take on the accent because mm-hmm. it was like there, there's only but so many American roles that they can give her right uh, in on the, in like British TV. I so mean, she does. This is, is weird to say, but she does look British. She she ha- she has that. Looking she at this carries, picture, she carries the Brit. With her, yes. I don't know if she's. She, I'm sure she has British ancestry in some fashion. Uh, and like if, if I walked into a British pub and tried a British accent, like you're not British. But if Gillian Anderson, and they're like, it doesn't sound a lot British, but she looks British. Yeah, it's like, hello, governor, can I get a pint? <laughs> yeah, come like, on. like I we're can't watching do it. the match. All right. <laughs> We have a Brit that works in the office here, uh, Jack, who... Uh, Anytime does... he opens his mouth, somebody says something stupid, like, oh, Kyle, go... <laughs> yeah. it's pretty bad. He's got a pretty thick British accent, yes. if you've ever listened to his uh, Premier League sports uh-huh, coverage. Uh-huh, but, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I can't do it, but she she can, and, and that's, that is, like, there's a lot of British actors that can do American accents wonderfully well. That's sure. why they run American television, yeah. but it doesn't work both ways, uh-uh. and she's one of the only ones that kind of crosses over. I think this show's interesting. Uh, I, I, I definitely will probably give it a shot yeah uh it doesn't necessarily look like it's exactly for me Mm -hmm. as an audience member but it sounds quirky enough like a scripted american vandal like if this was season three (laughs) american vandal would be like some kid was running a sex advice ring in high school and this is our new docuseries like yeah you know yeah yeah. but uh back to jillian anderson let's just talk about her no um (laughs) i i i don't know man this seems so like one of those shows where they they're like trying so hard to make this work. Yeah, to make it edgy. Yes. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I, I I got a little bit of that in the trailer. And yeah. you even see the like the friend flip where the her friend the friend kisses his love interest because he loves young Margot Robbie. Of course. Let's just call her Fargo Robbie. Fargo Robbie. Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know. I. I get what you're saying. It may not be for you, but I love high school comedies, so they would be for me. I loved American Vandal. I love the Inbetweeners. Hell, I even watched The Gifted. That show was terrible. Well, there you go. Um, but I don't know. Fargo Robbie, by the way, her real name is Emma Mackey. Oh, uh, Emma uh, Mackey. This looks like her first big role. Relation actually. to Anthony Mackey? Uh, none. None. Okay. None. Okay. Oh, that's Asia Butterfield in uh, the lead role, the the kid from Hugo yes. and, and Ender's Game. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. look familiar. I knew it. He kind of has that like young Nicholas Holt look. Okay, do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the or the kid from uh, like Sing Street. Oh yeah, you know the kid who played the lead in Sing Street. Like very, you know, like the wafty long hair and the blue eyes, and then like the fair skin. And he's like, nobody likes me. I'm just a, 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 my, everything's a, not right. And it's a, yeah. I know that's why. Here's the thing too, and why British actors do so well on American television. I don't know if the Eng- the English accent is way more difficult to do than the American accent, but the American accent is very simple in the fact that as long as you sound non-regional, it's fine. But I feel like every block in London has a different accent. Right. Yeah, it is. A, I mean, yes, yes. And, and people in London or England or Ireland or Scotland, whatever, if you try their accent, you don't do it well. They legit get offended. In America, we're like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I really don't. I, mean, I, I think there. I think there are some accents that that. Like the like the traditional like southern redneck neck sure. accents and stuff. There are some that 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 carry carry a little, a little bit more weight when you, when you uh, when you when you insult them mm-hmm. uh, with their accent because it becomes more of a, a class system thing. Yes, yes. And I think that that's what that's what it is in the UK because uh. so much of that accent in so much because they ha- it's more compressed than the states. Yeah. So much of their regional accents are based on the class systems mm. of Britain. And I think that like so like the Liverpool accent or the Cockney the Cockney yeah. accent is a much different class than like the upper crust yeah, accent no, of, of one, London. You're 100 so. percent right. And thank you. Yeah, uh, then we can just end the conversation right sure, there. Sure. Yeah. You're 100 no percent right. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of shows that I'm probably not going to watch because uh, I read enough Agatha Christie in high school and or grade school yeah. to know that. Uh, it, and again, I watched. I watched Murder on the Orient Express. You did. I watched it. It was on television. I haven't seen it. I yet. turned it on at the beginning. I fell asleep twice throughout it because it's a long movie. Uh huh. And each time I woke up, I knew exactly what was happening. I didn't really need to know other things. And then when it ended, I was like, "Okay, this, this didn't need to get made, <laughs> right?" Um, which is how I look at these ABC murders. The, yeah. It is supposed to be for Netflix, but that, this looks like it should be on TNT. It's, they on, know it's on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, Excuse sorry. Me. 
It looks like it should be on TNT because they know drama. I mean, it legitimately yeah. looks like one of those shows. And I want to watch Eye in the Night. India Isley's in it. She was on I Collider do Live. Watch, I do want to watch Eye in the Night. That looks awesome. Yeah, it does. Right? And TNT will come out with one. Like, The Alienist got a bunch of nominations for things, a show that I didn't watch, um, just because as soon as I see period piece in England, yeah. it, it just it turns me off. I just, I, I've been Kira Knightley too many times. <laughs> And so this is the same thing. Yeah. I feel like I'm walking into that. Yeah. I mean, the, the only thing that this show has going forward is John Mal- Malkovich. Malkovich. Uh, he, was mo- he was in the most recent season of Billions. He was great. Uh, love him. He always... He, he always He's playing Teddy KGB from Rounders, basically, yeah, in Billions. He, yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he is. And I think that he loves, he loves putting on an accent oh, and yeah. a weird affectation. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one of those actors that loves getting into these characters, mm-hmm. much like Kenneth Branagh, who yes. plays Poirot on the big screen right. and directed Murder on the Orient Express. Mm-hmm. Uh, this just feels... Because this is actually the second uh, uh, Agatha Christie movie mini like limited series that Amazon's done. They did one last fall called The Ordeal of Innocence with Bill Nye. Uh, uh, that does it's not a Pro story. It's mm-hmm. a different. It's different characters. Uh, uh, but it uh, they they must have just picked up like the three novels that the movies didn't get. Right. Like. That are the uh, that people know of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Agatha Christie's written a wrote a gazillion books. Sure. But uh, I think that they they picked up three properties that weren't packaged with the film rights. Mm. Like you get Murder on the Orient Express, you get Jewel of the Nile, you get these like high level pro pro yeah. uh, pro pro stories, and then um, and then Amazon picked up the other ones. It feels kind of like a burn off. Yeah. Uh, I, like it's a three part it's a three part series. Yeah, my guess is if you're a really big mystery fan, like if you if you love masterpiece mystery or uh, if you love uh, like the Sherlock uh, the the Sherlock reboot, mm-hmm. uh, you're you're probably gonna enjoy this. This looks like sure. this looks like this could be on masterpiece mystery. Yeah, more so than TNT in my opinion. Okay, but, uh, and and that's but not masterpiece. Mystery, no drama. <laughs> they they know drama. Okay. They know mystery. Okay, they know mystery. Okay. Uh, very well. And so, but. Again, if you like Masterpiece Mystery, you got like 20 seasons of Poirot back yeah. in the 90s with yeah. David Suchet, who's really the the epitome of that character. Is he, he French? Uh, David Suchet? Uh, no, I don't think he was. Okay. Uh, I think he was British. Uh, and I think he he played him for 13 seasons uh, from 89 till 2013. And they covered literally like every, every Agatha Christie book, he, book ever. Uh, and then original stories as well. Uh, and he, yeah, he's, he, he's from the UK. But he was kind of the quintessential one. The show ended, and then now all these rights are open again, and that's why we're seeing all these all these adaptations. I just I don't think we need them, yeah. but I'm sure someone somewhere will enjoy it. Amazon Prime, I think, skews a little older yeah. than Netflix because even though my parents don't know how to work it, yeah, my parents don't know how to work it either. <laughs> Uh, come to think of it, well, they figured it out for Maisel. They okay. figured out how to work it for Maisel. Yeah. Uh, they don't have Netflix, uh. but they. I, I, well, I think they do have Netflix. They don't know they have Netflix. <laughs> it's different. Uh, but <laughs> they they know they have Amazon Prime. Okay. Because uh, they get the shipping, yeah. and so I'm like, well, you also get the videos. And you can set it up on your TV, and then yeah. they figured out how to set it up on their TV, and they can watch some stuff on Amazon. It's just and the Amazon homepage is so busy that my parents are like, what do I press? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 I there still is, sometimes there don't is know what to press. There is everything there. Yeah. Uh, but I think that if you know, this is for the this is for the older crowd. That's mm-hmm. like, oh, an Agatha Christie story. I know that. Mm-hmm. Like they they're the ones that watched the last tycoon and might have actually enjoyed it. Oh yeah. Or they watched uh, like uh, uh, the Z the Zelda Fitzgerald uh, show with uh, Christina Ricci. Zelda. Oh my God, that was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, to each their own. Yeah. I, I think that it's this is not something that I'm going to watch. This is my my this is what I'm giving this show. I'm giving it to De Niro face. Meh. <laughs> On the house. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's move on to the trailer that really got me because I watched the first season of Future Man. And I, I haven't yet. Loved it. Is it good? It's hysterical, man. It is the funniest look at time travel I've ever seen. Okay. It's like because it's produced by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and, and they made the show. Familiar? So it's obviously weird. And there's a ton of sex and dick jokes in it. So I mean clearly. Of course, obviously. Clearly. Um 
and Josh Hutcherson, who is, I mean, best known for Hunger Games, yes. right, as Pita. Uh, and the I forget the actress's name. She was in Happy Endings, which is a great show that ABC just floundered with, buried, and oh, got rid of. Oh, I loved Happy Endings. Um, that show should have had a run like New Girl. It really should have. It really should have. Uh, Eliza Coop. Oh, yeah, she's great. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of hers. She's incredible. She's so funny. And I mean, listen, Happy Endings got 57 episodes, but we never got like the wrap up that we wanted. It just ended. Happy Endings was so funny, man. Yeah. And, and you know what Fox did well with New Girls that, that uh, Happy Endings did? Did also did well, but then it didn't. Was they made them thirteen episodes, so it was thirteen uh, episode comedies or whatever. But then ABC was like, "Oh, it's not doing well on Tuesday. Let's make it on a Thursday. It's not doing. Well, let's put it on a Friday. Oh, let's put it on a Saturday." And it then got it just the, it got done. the mid season shuffle. And yep. I hate I hated that. Yeah, but it yep. was a very very funny show. Anyway, so she's in it. It's basically I tried to sell my wife on it because I was laughing so hard the one night. I was like, "It's basically if you got stoned and drunk and wrote a Terminator." reboot on TV. Which is probably what Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg did. Correct. Correct. And it is, dude, I'm telling you, it is the, it is so funny. It's, it's does, it pulls no punches. And this trailer for season two looks so off the wall. Okay. It's just awesome. All I can't right. well, recommend gonna, Future I, Man I'm, high enough. I'm, I'm going to check it out because I, I finally figured out how to work my Hulu. Yeah. Uh, binged uh, Killing Eve on there uh, over the break. Attaboy. So, Attaboy. so uh, now I, now I'm going to get, uh, get yeah. working on Future Man. But that's, that's great. The trailer looks like the timeline is all kinds of crazy. Uh, okay. The, and the okay. cool thing that, that uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Gold do and I, I've, I've always had trouble with in time travel is they don't care about like this timeline thing kind of a thing they do like they play it but it's not so important that it's like I don't know how time travel works kind of thing like in the flashpoint or in all those like flash episodes where whatever yeah um, you know it's you like when you're watching um, uh, uh, a flash Every episode's like, well, if I go back to here, this will be wrong. In Future Man, like, we have to go back here. We don't care if it's wrong. Yeah, we don't yeah. care if there's going to be like nine-headed moths. We have to do it. The, the there are there are so many different parallels and like the, they don't worry about any of the any of the time travel paradoxes that 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 a Back to the Future would or something like that. Basically, yes, correct. Like shit, shit goes wrong and they don't care. Correct. Kind of like Rick and Morty. Yes, one hundred percent. All it, all in it. It's a live action Rick and Morty, basically. That's the best way to sell that show. Yep. I think that they, I think they'd be very happy to hear. Yes. That. Yep. I think a new promo for Rick and Morty finally just dropped. Oh, okay. Actually, but nice. I think it's more just them complaining that the show is taking too long to make. Uh. I mean, you can't rush genius, and no. you definitely can't rush uh, what's his name, um, Dan Harmon. You nope. can't rush him. No, or 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 Justin Rowland. Right. Uh, by the way, I played the Rick and Morty VR game a couple uh, month or so back, and love okay. it. It is so much fun. You would you would you would. It's not scary at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's like just a puzzle game, but okay. but Rick and Morty'd, and it's. Freaking hilarious. Okay. And it's very fun. I, awesome. I played it for hours. We were supposed to play that Wreck It Ralph, but that never really came to fruition. Oh yeah. Um so you just put this in the rundown. Uh, I just saw this, yeah. This is this is genius. Uh this <laughs> this series with Idris Elba, Netflix has released a premiere date and first images of the upcoming comedy series, Turn Up Charlie, starring Idris Elba. Uh not to it, be confused with Cheer Up Charlie, which is the really annoying Cheer song up Charlie. from yes. uh, the, the ballad the, first, the ballad from the original Willy Wonka. Uh, Willy Wonka. Um because Luther just premiered on BBC One. Yeah, and, and I can't wait to see it. We're and not going to get it for like four months, probably. There's no, there's not even a release date yet in the no. states. Do you so, know who has access to it? Do you know who like illegally downloads it? I'm not going to give you a name, but I think you could probably guess who. I have gets a guess. The rip because I, he loves British TV so much. I, I have a, I have a guess. Yeah, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Ugh, but man. he always used to send me British TV. He's like, you got to watch this show. I'm like, I'll just wait for Netflix, man. Yeah. I'm not getting a virus on my computer. <laughs> Uh, but it's, uh, I mean, he played, Turn Up Charlie will see Elba's character getting a chance to success in an unexpected way as he reluctantly becomes a manny to his famous friend's problem child daughter. Uh, He's also a struggling DJ he, and eternal bachelor. A struggling DJ and eternal bachelor sounds incredible. Which, fun fact, it's been all over the internet this week. Yeah. Idris Elba is a real life DJ, and it, if you follow him on Twitter, you know that because it's uh, all he posts about. Okay. And he's DJing. He's doing a DJ set at Coachella this year. That would be the only reason to go to Coachella. Uh, yeah. To, to, for me. And so he's his name's in the lineup, and everyone's like been freaking out since the lineup came out. They're like, "Why is Idris Elba on the lineup? Like, clearly, yeah. you're not an Idris fan yeah. because." He is a DJ. I, I 
it's kind of like Hodor, but everybody knew Hodor was a DJ. Everyone knew Hodor was a DJ. Because they were yeah. like, what else does this guy do? He, but Idris Elba, you're like, when in the world does he have time in between <laughs> things? But let me let me just say this. I've always been very, uh, and you know this as you know, the producer, director of the Josh McCuga show, my thoughts on DJs, okay? Yeah. Uh, that they are just great at iTunes. Yes, they are. Or taking other songs and like, hey, I can put a beat to this as long as I can learn. I'll take a $300 learning annex class on how to use DJ Pro Tools. Yeah. And then I can... Then play Las Vegas for six million dollars a night, which is crazy that I haven't just done this. I mean, I, 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 if I had a time machine, I would go back like fifteen years ago and mm-hmm. and become the, become Cal, Calvin Harris. Yes, 100%. not just so I could could no. date Taylor Swift. And you know, I have. I know you just got a Peloton, but I, listen, I go to spin <laughs> it's my classes. Wife. It's, my wife. it's your wife. It's not. It's not mine. I want a Peloton. Um, I go to spin class with my wife like twice twice a month. Uh, it's a little intense for me, you know, getting yelled at in a dark room while riding a bike extremely fast. Uh, well, as fast as my fat legs can go. Uh, next to my wife, who is legitimately Lance Armstrong, when he was doing the blood doping, like oh, not like full doping, full doping blood art, blood uh, Lance Armstrong. L- live strong. And the music that they play is just, it's so loud. You got to wear earplugs. Yeah, and it's just like a beat put to Beyonce. And every class is the same. It's, 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 Correct. It's, 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 Knit it. it's, it's. Today is the day that you overcome your demons. And it's I'm just riding a bike in the dark. Right? I'm sweating a lot. I'm really sweating a ton. But my idea, and my idea always for being a DJ has been, I'm going to play songs in the middle, like drop comedy tracks. Like a, like one-liners from a comedy track, right? Like drop a John Mulaney or a Jerky Boys <laughs> or like a classic like George Carlin. Like, dun, 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 dun. Greatest day of my life was when I went to the salt and Pepper Cafe in Chicago. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Like that's, that's what I want to do, it's right? It's not unusual. Yeah. Uh, and then my idea for a spin class, right, is that I spin classic rock with like a beat behind it if I want, if not. And then, you know, spin teachers like go out and they're like, if you think that today is the day that you don't accomplish your goals, you are wrong. You came into the wrong class. The rest of your life starts right now. Mine's going to be like, in 1984, three men walked onto a stage in Houston, and Journey Live in Houston was started. <laughs> She's just a small town girl. Bah, bah. And I'm like getting people psyched about classic rock instead of mumble rap. That's just, it's a total tangent. But I think that Idris I think Elba that was completely and I, on topic. me and Idris Elba could be total DJ buddies. You could. Because Idris Elba is the most interesting man in the world. He's the coolest guy ever. He's the coolest guy ever. Have you ever seen his, like, the driving thing he did? Because he loves cars. Yes. Obsessed with cars. And he does, like, this drifting thing. And he did, like, he basically did a version of Top Gear for him. I forget what it was called, but I watched all of it. I do. I vaguely remember when that came out. Yeah. Yeah. I even bought a long tweed jacket. (laughs) To look like Luther? Yep. I, I, Idris Elba's the best. Yeah. When everybody's like, he's too old to be James Bond, I was like, you can rot in hell. Because that man is not too old to be James Bond. That man is ageless. He is the man. He is like if Idris Elba. Here's what always been my problem with James Bond or any spy movies with Tom Cruise or whatever. A man that looks like Tom Cruise that's supposed to be a spy walks into a casino. Everybody's like, whoa, who's that guy? What's he doing? He right. looks great. A guy like me walks in. They're like, uh, sir, um, coat checks over there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can I get a martini? Like, or can I see your invitation? Are you on the list? That kind of a situation. I think that's better spy work, right? Yeah. Idris Elba walks in as James Bond. The entire room turns around. I mean, my wife is obsessed with Luther, and I think it's just because it's Idris Elba. Probably. Probably. I remember uh, a few weeks back we were talking about uh, people that blew your mind when you realized that their accents were fake. Yes. Uh, when I fa- when I found out that Idris was not from West Baltimore. No. While watching The Wire and learning about his character, his acting for the first time. Yes. Uh, it blew my mind. And then I held that information for like a season before I told my wife. Right. And she lost it. Uh-huh. She's like, she, he's British? Yeah. And not what? only British, he's like East London British. Yeah. Like he says, my mate. Like yeah. he, he's like, he go is, watch a Guy Ritchie movie. He's British. He is British. And uh, it's so, I mean, it's it, along the same lines as the first time I heard David Beckham talk. Like when I thought David Beckham was going to open his mouth, I thought it was going to be like, hello, I'm David Beckham. I'm like, what? And he's like, ah, it's my David Beckham. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening right now? Who is this human being? Uh, but yes, um, Idris Elba can do no wrong. And you know what's cool about Idris Elba is that there. I don't. I feel like there isn't like a project that he's too big for. 
in his mind. That's true. Yes. Because if he want, like, he he's a movie need, star. He didn't need to do this Netflix thing. No. He wants to work. Yeah. He loves doing it. If he loves a script, he's going to do it or yeah. whatever. I want and him he, in more big budget stuff. Like he yes. was in the most recent Star Trek movie, yeah. and I loved him in sure. that. Uh, but I want to see. I want to see him do. I, I'd love to see him do a James Bond or something. An if Idris Elba vehicle. Like or like if he doesn't want. If they won't cast him as James Bond, fine. Make him the. Make him like the the British. Mission Impossible guy, sure, and have him and and Tom Cruise duke it out in, yes. in, in, in a in in like Mission Impossible Seven. By all means, like I would watch that. I would watch twelve of those movies. Or like a Idris Elba joins a street racing squad that fights the Fast and Furious guys. Yeah, or is it? Is he's he in, in a, he's in Hobbs and Shaw. That's he's, what I he's the villain in Hobbs and Shaw. That's I, think. What I knew it. And 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 more power to him. Or give me like a car racing movie where Idris Elba breaks in because it's an all white kind of a thing, and he's like the sick black dude that uh, that beats yeah. everybody. Yeah, you know because. You have one in motorcycle racing. I mean, you, there's a new Formula One guy that uh, that is black, and he's awesome. I forget his name. I listened to a, an interview with him. But doing like a story like that yeah. is very timely right now. I don't know. Now we're just pitching Idris Elba projects, and that's he could do a rom com with like. Give me the holiday I, too, and put Idris Elba in it. Oh, that'd be great. Right. Oh. Mm. Which holiday would it be though? Well, we've seen Christmas. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of is Thanksgiving movies. There's not a lot of Thanksgiving movies. I'm wondering if it needs to be set in a different in, in a different season. Like maybe mm. it needs to be like summertime. Fourth of July. Fourth of July, maybe. Well, yeah. you have to be American in that one. Yeah. Because it's not an international holiday. No, no, but uh, but isn't like uh, isn't is it, doesn't France Bastille doesn't Bastille Day? Day isn't that near? Isn't it's like July 5th, I think, or, or the 11th or something? Something like that. I don't know. My mom was a French major in college. She would probably know. Yeah. Well, let's call her up. Let's find yeah, out. Let's see what's going on. Uh, all right. Well, let's... speaking speaking of lots of speech, <laughs> now we're now we're transitioning to, to the Freedom of Speech Act. Good good transition. Um, back. Yeah. Really so, well done. Uh, Hassan Minaj uh, has a weekly uh, uh, a weekly show on on Netflix on Netflix Patriot uh, Act the Patriot Act. It's it's I've watched his, every episode. It's it, great. He's he's great. He's a friend friend of your old mm -hmm, show, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very funny comedian. Yes. And uh, he it's his version, his topical news program. Mm -hmm. And they did a whole episode about Saudi Arabia in the wake of uh, the the murdering of Khashoggi. Right. Uh, and that episode has now been pulled from Netflix in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. because it violates a number of Saudi statutes about insulting. Uh, the the higher ups and, and at this whatnot. point, what doesn't uh, like insult the Saudi crown? I think yeah. it's like everything. I'm, yeah. I'm again. I I own it. Step. I don't. I just want to say this. Yeah. Don't don't like mess around with Saudi Arabia. Okay, I like Hassan Minhaj a lot. I think he's a very funny, very talented man. Yeah. I get pushing buttons, but let's just like just do your American comedy. I, I, or just well, that's what I love about Hassan is that he's not afraid to do I'm international <laughs> for him. I don't want somebody coming over here and being like, hey, I, I'm going to kill us. I'm gonna, I don't want that. I Listen, don't want that either. I, I get comedy. I, I, I understand that wanting to push the envelope, wanting to get you, – you don't need to do that, man. And I, I freedom of speech, it's all uh, whatever. You know, it, They kept it on YouTube. I mean you, the Saudis can still find it. The people that live right. in Saudi Arabia and want to and revolt against the, the crown prince or whatever. These guys clearly don't care and our government clearly doesn't care. It's fair. It's a fair point. That's and a fair point. Do you, if they think that they're gonna, I, it's just scary, man. Yeah, I mean, I would say I would a year or two ago, I think you'd be like, well, they, no one's gonna touch like a public figure. But clearly, the conversation we're having right now is because they touched a public figure and they they murdered uh, a someone. man. They murdered a, they a cut up a person. Yeah, yeah. So and and that was the one we knew about. Yes. So. You know, he's speaking truth to power. Uh, I'm happy for him. He he tweeted like you were saying, talking about how I hope it's this still up on YouTube in Netflix. I really hope it does. I, I, if for nothing, if for no other reason, I hope that the, the publicity does shine a light on his show because it's yep. real. It's 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 well, well done. done. I'm glad he's. It's a it's a standing version of last week tonight, which it which is needed. Now, it was his he, was he releasing one a week? Yes. Okay. So so this was the one a week model that they mm -hmm. tried with Michelle Wolf and mm -hmm. and uh, Joel McHale. Yes. To middling results. Yes. But but uh, I, I think Hassan might be the sweet spot there because mm -hmm. he's got the international audience built in. Uh, clearly, there are people around the world that are watching the show because yes. they had to pull it from the mm -hmm. uh, Saudi Saudi streams. Uh, I mean, it does go into the whole thing about whether or not American companies should be censoring themselves and other governments. But we've talked about uh, last week tonight. 
that whenever he does the parliament thing. whenever he does the parliament thing and he has to replace it with Gilbert Godfrey reading quotes from the Bible or something. Uh, no, uh, uh, I think it's Yahoo reviews or Yelp reviews. Yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, which is almost worse. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and because he can't show it in the UK, and you know Google has like their own version of the search engine in China. It's a whole thing. So. It's a brave new world we're dealing with with multiple countries and cultures yes. and stuff. But uh, this is, you know, this is this is delicate territory to right. say the least. Hopefully, it will shine a light on season two of of, uh, of Patriot Act, which is a great name for a show. It really is. It's a really good name for his show. And the marketing, the 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 uh, the like, the, they did a bunch of commercials for the show mm-hmm. where they were joking about uh, like NSA surveillance yes. of Hassan. It's very funny. Really well done. Uh, and his they, episode of. Um, Comedians and cars getting coffee is actually very good. It so. was very good. I, yeah. I I I enjoy hearing from him because he's 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 a young, fresh comic that he's yeah. got a very unique story and a very unique voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm glad that you know Netflix has given him this platform. One hundred percent. Let's move on to something. I'm talking to speaking. I'm going to do a thadzition here. Speaking of coming unmasked, uh, <laughs> last night uh, the uh, the mask singer premiered on Fox, and uh, Mark Ellis had a very funny tweet of, uh, like a couple weeks ago about the, the downfall of society, starting with the masked singer. And I got to tell you, the marketing worked on me for this one because I tuned in for a solid ten minutes of it. I I, I forgot it was airing, and then turned off what I was watching and it was still on and I was like oh yeah. but I'm going to watch the rest of this episode because yep. I got hooked real quick uh-huh. it's kind of addicting it, uh, it's weird it's weird the amount of money spent on the costumes is my is like most money I'll ever make in one year in my life on one of the costumes I assume I assume it each costume they spent more money on that than they did on the money that they paid the panelists. Yes. Because the panel is the illustrious combination of Jenny McCarthy, Ken Jong, Nicole Scherzinger from the Pussycat Dolls. Mm-hmm. She and, keeps getting work. And Robin Thick. Boom. Blurred lines. Yeah. Talk about remember, it. Remember remember blurred lines? Remember blurred lines? Yeah. Um, remember when um, you had shows with judges that you figured they've got talent? Right. Right. Like, uh, who's got talent, all this kind of thing. I Now they're coming out with this world's finest situation, which seems just like instead of America's got talent, it's just world's got oh, talent. Oh, yeah, 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 it's the same thing. Which America's got talent, you don't have to be American. There's a lot of people that have gone on there yeah. that live in America but are foreign, whatever the case may be. I don't understand um, the pitch of this show, but then I watched it, and I still don't understand why I'm watching it. I hated this. I hated every second of it. Um, and also, who is doing Nick Cannon's hair? What is going on there? I, it's, I, it's gone past Soul Glow. It's gone past the Eric LaSalle yeah. Soul Glow in Coming to America to now just being like a very lazy... I, I don't understand someone, it. Someone, someone, someone equated it to uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Yes, with his haircut. Yeah, uh, and I, you know, that's fine. He's doing his own thing. Uh, I think it was. <laughs> it's an eyesore. It was weird. It was weird. It was I was like when I, Ken, I was remember surprised. when Ken Napsok had like the long hair that he turned into a ponytail. Do you remember that for a while? Yeah, and he refused. I to cut sent it. him a long friendship text message, and I said, Ken, it's time. It's time to cut the hair. Somebody needs to go to Nick Cannon and be like, man, listen. It's just not working. And then somebody needs to go to the mass Singer people and be like, how many drugs are we all doing that we did this? But then they won the night. They won the, the night. It's the biggest premiere that Fox has had all season. And it's based on a, it's based on a Korean format, I think. Of course it is. Uh, that's huge. The Asian game show destroys everything. Yeah, it's I mean, awesome. it's, it's, it's another world. When mm-hmm. I was in Japan last year, we, watched, we put on the TV for an hour, and it, I felt like I did every drug on the planet. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Same as the people that and I loved it. did the costumes for Mass Singer. They're like, yeah. let's do drugs and then draw stuff. Yeah. And then make it. And they're great. And so if you if you didn't watch it, if you didn't watch it, let me let me just try to recap. So they they they've got these celebrities mm-hmm. that we think they're celebrities. We don't know who they are. That they're they're, they're they're some sort of personalities that they've put in these ridiculous costumes. There's mm-hmm. one that's one one in a monster suit that rivals gritty. Ah. There's uh there's there's a horse. Yeah. There's an there's a lion. A lion. The lion. Yeah. The, the the gold lion was impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're all thinking the the lion is a Kardashian. That's that's uh, the, that's the going the going uh, suggestion on Twitter. I think. Can't believe you're fucking into this. Uh, I my I got so into this so <laughs> fast. My wife and I are like, what is this crap? And then we're like, well, wait, who is that? <laughs> who could that be? I think it's this person. I think it's this person. But they don't even have a list of they names to choose from. They don't whittle the, the the celebrity judges that are trying to guess. So it's kind of like uh, 
it's kind of like to tell the truth or what's my line mm-hmm. where the, the celebrity panel like comes up with ide- guesses for who they think that these people are. Mm-hmm. And they ask them a couple questions and then they... So they, it's like 20 questions. Are you a bench? They put a, they put a voice box on them so their voice is modulated and they uh, they, they answer they answer a few cryptic questions. Yeah. And then they get to pick out of the entire global population who they think these people are. Mm-hmm. So like literally someone's up there and I'm like, I think that might have been William Shatner. And then the person and then the panelist is like, are you Peyton Manning? Like (laughs) it's complete opposite ends of the spectrum that you could be. Did they actually guess that Antonio Brown was Antonio Brown? No, they uh, two people thought it was Deion Sanders. Mm. One person thought it was Odell Beckham Jr. And uh, one person, I forget who the fourth guest was, but uh, I definitely heard when they unmasked him and he was Antonio Brown, I heard Robin Thicke stand up and I th- I'm, I swear I heard him say, I knew it, thinking that, thinking in- that it was Odell Beckham Jr. Mm-hmm. And then and then Nick Cannon goes, ladies and gentlemen, Antonio Brown. Yeah. Like and- he had no idea. They like I think they were just feeding him names in an earpiece. They're sure. like, like, you think he's an F- NFL player? Well, what about this guy? Oh, yeah. Because they started talking about like the panelists started like. Ramping up, they're like, "Oh, it's definitely this person because of this and this." Mm-hmm. And I, and you could tell that they were feeding them like suggestions in their ear because they clearly don't know any NFL players. So I have this this running bet, and I think I've may have played this game with you before. It's a standing one hundred dollar bet. If you didn't order the Uber or the Lyft, and I get out of it, and I say, "Name, give me my Lyft driver's name," and you get it right, you win a hundred dollars. That's what I think the mass singer is. They're like. Any Ooh. celebrity ever. Yeah. Go. Like, what? I'm assuming one is like Gene Simmons. <laughs> I'm assuming I, I I'm I'm very convinced that the gold lion is a Kardashian. Okay. Uh I, I didn't I'm I i did not see the monster perform, so I don't know who that is. Okay. Uh and then apparently they're adding new new Masked characters singers. each week. Because mm. they I th- they taped this all in like a three day process of course. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so they, you know, I think they're just, there's going to be like 12 celebrities in these absurd costumes. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to watch every week. No. But if it's on and there's nothing else around, I'm definitely going to tune in and probably get hooked for like 20 minutes. Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know why, and I can't I can't explain it to you, but I'll tell you next week what, what happens. Okay. Uh, real quick, we just got a, a little breaking news here. Killing Eve is going to get an yes. April premiere, season two, April, on BBC America. I just, I binged the April whole- April 7th. I binged the whole series on New Year's Day. It's awesome. It was incredible. Yeah. I think it was, I liked it a little bit better than Bodyguard. Okay. Uh, I thought the writing was a little bit better. Uh, mm-hmm. It's different, completely different tone. I think they were a legitimate equal tie for me. Completely different tone for me. I sure. liked the ending of Killing Eve better than the ending of Bodyguard. The I will en- agree with the that. The ending of Bodyguard kind of, kind of, kind of put a, a weird taste in my mouth. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm, ex- I'm really excited for season two of Bodyguard. Me don't too. get me wrong. Uh, I thought, but I thought Killing Eve was great. Sandra Oh was incredible, uh, and Jodie Comer, the, 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 the she's the, the White Queen. She, I don't yeah. know if you ever watched the White Queen, but yeah, yeah, yeah. and she was awesome. Awesome, like. That Next level one. crazy. Yeah. And I loved every second of it. It's like my ex-girlfriend. Yeah, like four of your ex-girlfriends. Yeah, if yeah, I you can remember correctly. Yeah. You were at the concert. Yeah. Uh but yeah, this show this show was in- incredible. I was recommending it to people on Twitter uh, all day yesterday. Uh it's on Hulu right now, so you can binge the whole thing yeah, if you don't awesome. have BBC America. It's eight episodes or six? It was eight. Eight. Just I mean, it's the perfect and length of show. Created by Phoebe Waller Bridge, yeah. who's a really funny comedian. Fleabag. Act, Fleabag. Fleabag uh, is one of the funniest shows ever made. It's hysterical. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, she was also the she was the sassy droid on solo. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I, I I highly recommend that. I'm looking forward to season two. Sassy eight two one four. Real quick, Stranger Things is going to debut on July fourth. Uh, a very busy day in my house. Yeah. Uh, because we have a huge family Fourth of July party every year, so I probably won't get around to watching and finishing Stranger Things until the end of July. Yeah, it's going to be. It's it, July fourth is a weird day for a premiere for me. Yeah. Too, because it's like I feel like I already have plans, and they're usually out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas opposed to like a Halloween, like you're in yeah. for the night. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be that weekend. I do like the fact though, that we are getting like a summer stranger things because kids in the summertime get into trouble. Like the Sandlot, one of the greatest movies ever made summertime movie yeah. coming of age happens in the summertime, all that kind of stuff. I, I am, I like that because the first two seasons were wintertime, Christmas, exactly. whatever. Exactly. I like that we're getting a summer season. Yeah, I do too. I think, I think they needed to change a pace. Uh, I'm looking forward to the mall, the mall. Mm-hmm. I just looked it up. Uh, 
July 4th is a Thursday this year. Huh. So it's debuting on the Thursday, but I think most people are going to watch it over the weekend. Sure. So that makes sense. Because yeah. uh, most I assume most businesses will give you the Thursday and the Friday. Right. So you have a long weekend to watch it. And Thursday, uh, Friday. I've got a family wedding on that Saturday. It's there, I'm getting oof, the stranger I, things. I, 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 did a, I did a family wedding last year on the 4th. Yeah. My brother-in-law. Well, we're all going to be in Pittsburgh, so it's just a makes smart sense. move. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Mine uh, was in upstate New York. It was not easy for anyone to get to. No. I got to. Love you, Tony. De- a lot of destination weddings this summer that I'm psyched about. Woo. Uh, okay. Let's talk about, since uh, this we'll, we'll end the show, on uh, our holiday binge, the things that we binged over the holidays. Oh, yeah. Uh, amongst watching ep- ep- uh, Christmas episodes of The Office, a few Christmas. I So I watched Sally Forever, which is hysteric. It's on Showtime or HBO. 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 I've been HBO. seeing the promos for that. What is that? It's a British show. Okay. It's very funny. It's 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 kind of hard to explain, but it's about like this woman kind of like down on her luck and her fam like her family dynamic and her like trying to get it, like you you have to it's very hard for me to explain. Okay. But it's very well done. It's very funny. I've never seen half of these British actors before. Uh, but it has almost has like a very Tracy Almond um, tone it to it. Looked, it looked like that. It looked like yeah. a little Britain yeah. kind of yes. thing. Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, then, I, then I finished watching Escape at Danamora. Yes. Which was just awesome. Uh, that was, I think, one of the, I, if not my favorite like limited, I think that was easily my favorite limited series of the year. Yes, I think it. I think it's one of the best limited series uh, that we've had this decade. I thought that I was gonna like it less than I did, and I loved it. Like you know yeah. what I mean. Like I, going into it, I was kind of like, ah, true story. Yeah, prison, prison thing. Da, 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 yeah, da. I've seen this. It was but awesome. It was nothing. It was like nothing I expected it to no. be. Uh, ben Stiller crushed it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, like very interesting directorial style and debut. Like. I mean, because he, he, he's done some movies in the past, and this is the first time he's done uh, like a, a, a prestige television kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's a really good director. Yeah. Uh, but I've never he's he was playing on a different level. Yep. The three actors like uh, Benicio del Toro, Paul Dano, excuse me, uh, Patricia Arquette, mm-hmm. David Morse, yes, Eric Lang as the husband. Dude, I didn't know that that was Eric Lang until the last episode because I finally was like, who. Is this guy? And and I am DB. Yeah, Eric Lang, who's awesome in Narcos. Yeah, I mean, he's a great actor. Yeah. He's been in the Collider before. I've yeah. interviewed he, him. He's, he's awesome. He's been around for a, uh, ever. He was on Victorious. Yes, I remember <laughs> Victorious and, and Lost. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like he was doing that mouth thing the whole time Dude, with, well, his, he, with his mustache. He, yeah, or his teeth. But I think he had a prosthesis in there. Like yeah. the, obviously they did something. And, but the character of Lyle was the takeaway of that show. It's it's a shame to me that he hasn't been nominated yeah. for anything that I've seen. Right. Patricia Arquette obviously is going to get the nominations. And yeah. I, did Paul Dano or Benicio did they get nominated? Uh, I think at least one of them did. Okay. Because Paul Dano was this I thought was the standout. But obviously yeah. Benicio del Toro is just incredible. It's the best. It's the best Benicio del Toro work I've seen in a very long time. Yeah, maybe since uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I mean, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and. I, they were all playing in a different level. David Morse was incredible. Uh, I think, uh, like the supporting cast was very solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we were just saying, but Ben Stiller, I've never, I've never thought about it like this. But the he he brought something to the table as directing these these eight episodes. I think that I I've, I I I I can't think of another series. I mean, it was like he's on he he he. Came out on par with like Jean uh, Jean Marc Vallee yeah. for uh, for Big Little Lies one hundred percent in terms of like just directing the entire series and crafting the entire look and feel and the character development throughout the entire work. Yeah. I I cannot praise his work enough, and I think that it's going to be a hard uh, feat to beat him come uh, directing Emmys season. Uh, like for the, uh, the for the uh, limited series I, directing he, awards, he better get the. Um, um, director for the Golden Globe for limited series. Yeah, uh, I don't know if they MB2. actually. I don't think they give uh, they directing do. for Golden Globes. They do. Do they? He's nominated. Oh well. Oh, our... I mean, it's best limited series. Okay. So he'll oh, win it. He'll win it as a he's producer. executive producer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so none of the actors, only Patricia Arquette, is nominated. Ah. Oh, they probably uh, canceled each other out in the nominations. Yes. Which uh, it, which tends to happen. And the same thing with Eric Lang and and David Morse is like the support, supporting supporting is like a, a minefield. So it's totally. really hard to yeah. it's really hard to. Uh, which is unfortunate, but they I mean uh, incredible uh, performances by both on that. Um, 
and and then I watched Homecoming, uh, which you've been asking me to watch. I yeah. binged that really easily. Uh, well, it's half hour episodes. Yeah, it's really quick. Uh, very Sam Esmaily, you know, very feel. Yes, especially the way that all the episodes ended, you know, mm-hmm. like quietly and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I liked it. You didn't love it. Mm-mm. That's fair. Yeah, That's it was fair. good. I. Amanda was telling me that in the podcast, which I didn't listen to because Amanda listened to the podcast, Catherine Keener plays Dewey Roberts. Just put Catherine Keener in that role. Yeah, and Oscar Isaac played the the soldier. Just put Oscar Isaac. I mean, I maybe can't get Oscar Isaac, but yeah, you can yeah, get yeah, Catherine yeah. Keener. You can get Catherine Keener, but if you get Julia Roberts, I thought Julia Roberts did a really good She's job. She's great. She's I hadn't great. seen her. I hadn't seen her in something this meaty in yeah. a while, uh, which was really nice to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think uh, I thought that uh, Stephen James, the 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 soldier, was incredible. Great work. And and we were talking about this. Shea Wiggum, awesome. I, he's in everything. Yes. And I can't get enough of him. I know. And I, the I was telling you about the glasses. Yes. That little glasses thing that he does. Like I love the it. little affectations that he brings to those characters. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've talked always, about it before. Him in Vice Principals is absolutely perfect. He was so funny in so Vice Principles. Yeah. But, uh, uh, what'd you get into? Uh, I did a lot, So because okay. I, I was sick, yeah. and my wife was out of town. Oh, well done. So it was literally me and my dog on the couch, mm-hmm. and I was like, what am I going to binge today? Yeah. So, uh, real quick, uh, I finished Succession Season 1. Great. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, really loved it. Yeah. Thank you for the recommendation. Sure. Very good show. Uh, I, and I finally did Ozark. I did both seasons of Ozark wow, in both. like... In two and a half days. Whoa! That's, I did season one in a day, that's and then and right then there. broke broke season two up into two days. I didn't love it as much as you wanted me to love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought some of the acting was great. Uh, Laura Linney and Julia Garner mm-hmm. uh, are next level. Uh, Julia Garner and Julia those Garner's. and those kids. We were talking yeah. about the kid, the ch- young adult actors. Yeah. Those kids. I mean, you were you were not kidding. Yeah. You weren't kidding that they get a lot to do and mm-hmm. they are good at it. Yep. And so, so, like, th- that part of the cast, incredible. Sure. Didn't love Jason Bateman as much as I wanted to, but I mean, okay. But it, it, it was still a good show. I'm going to continue watching season three. Yeah. It's not as, it's it, it to me, it felt a little Breaking Bad light. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's a really high bar. And Breaking Bad light is still better than most of the rest of television. Sure. So, you know, okay. not bad, just... It did not meet my expectations, probably because I've waited so long to watch it that I've just been hearing you talk about it for gotcha. so long. Uh, finished Springsteen on Broadway. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was different. It yeah. was different. I wanted more music than my story. But that's I'd say I loved the story. Yeah. I loved listening. I could I could listen to him talk for hours. It and just I did. Felt very, I know. It just felt very self-serving at points. And I just, I mean, that's I like fair. it. I it's love a one his man music. Show. It's a one-man show. It's You're a right. one-man but show, a, yeah. which is what I really wanted. And I really show. liked it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> watched a really bad movie called The Little Hours. Okay. Uh, did not like that. Don't okay. recommend. Uh, caught up with Shameless for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Uh, season 9. Yeah. Uh, 9A. Yeah. Not good. Uh, I'm this. I, I, I got It's gonna be hard I, to hold on. To I this. have to find out what happens to Fiona. I, mean, I know we all do. And I thought we're, that she was done at the end of season. Roxy nine, and I were talking about yesterday. I thought she was done at the mid season, and so I was like, oh well, I'll watch these seven episodes and yeah. say goodbye to her character. But she's still here, so yeah. I have to continue watching when it premieres in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, did all the Big Little Lies? Yeah, that show is incredible. Very well done. Um, the Rose Parade with Corden Tish came back. And you sent me that thing on Instagram today with like the, the replacement scripts. Just yeah. incredible. Uh, they, they, it, it, it brings so much joy. And it really does. A float caught fire. Because parades are terrible. Yeah, I saw that. A float caught fire about an yeah. hour and a half into the show. Yeah. And so they had to ad lib as the parade float caught fire and a tow truck came in. Uh, and they uh, and to move the tow truck or the parade float out of yeah. the, uh, the the area, and it was really funny. Okay, Good. it brings me a lot of joy yes. to watch to watch a fully produced show that is real for everything except for the characters right. that are hosting it. Yeah, uh, like they had a TV truck with like old school TV news crew doing the production, just awesome. like just like a regular rose parade yeah. coverage would be yeah. but it was all fake That's and awesome. I loved it yeah. uh, Escape of Dan Moore we talked about yeah. Killing Eve we talked about and Bandersnatch did you Bandersnatch? no I did not Bandersnatch but I got a very successful tweet out of Bandersnatch uh, yes let it be known for the record you did pitch Bandersnatch <laughs> from what I understand as an episode of Collider Behind the Scenes what is the plot to Bandersnatch? well so Bandersnatch is a it's a choose your own adventure oh yeah this is my uh... and and all through the show, you have to pick A or B, mm-hmm. uh, like all these different choices, and then it changes the narrative as you go. That was my idea for a cloud of behind the scenes. It would have blown the world. It would have blown the world up, yeah. uh, and we never produced it because mm-hmm. it was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
Netflix has a lot of Netflix money, yeah. and they did it for Black Mirror. I liked it a lot. Okay. I thought it was really entertaining. Okay. Uh, creepy story. Sure. Very fun. Uh, highly recommend everyone to play through it and then like keep trying the different endings. And you know, you can look online and see the flowchart of all the different options. Oh, cool. And you can try to beat the game, uh-huh. as it were, because there's like a hidden ending that like gives you a perfect score, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Uh, I have not done that yet. Um, I think it is a show and not a game. Okay. I know that's the debate right now. Right. I think it is a show. Uh, I think it is a, has a. It's like Crash Bandicoot, but Crash it, Bandersnatch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, Bandersnatch apparently is a character from uh, Through the Looking Glass. Ah. I did not know that. Got it. Because okay. I don't read. Yeah, me too. Uh, but uh, I liked it a lot. Okay. It was a cool Black Mirror episode. It's, it's a mind trip. Uh, and I think it's really interesting because it's all about fate versus free will. Okay. And I think... Most people will realize as they go through that you don't have as much free will as you think you do, mm-hmm. both in life hmm. and <laughs> can't wait to watch this and uh, and in the confines of this of this uh, film. Okay, so yeah, boom, there you go. That's your that's your holiday binge. That's your first Collider TV talk for 2019. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Collider TV talk. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the podcast feed. Subscribe to everything Collider. All the shows that we have. Uh, we, we're you know, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. We post everything there, our opinions on TV, all that kind of funny stuff. And go to Collider.com because we have some a, an amazing team of writers that writes all about television. They're fantastic. Thad, where can the good people find you? Uh, then you can find me at Thad Williams. And yeah, at Collider.com, uh, Allison Keene's already reviewed uh, True Detective Season 3, and she liked it a lot. There you go. And I'm really excited. Comes out, not this weekend, but next. All kinds of fun TV this first part of the year. Uh, Punisher, True Detective. Star Trek uh, Discovery. Uh, I Am the Night, all that kind of fun Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching as always especially put down through the looking glass put down the book pick up the remote